So, Justin, how long do we have? Two minutes until we get the, oh, it comes above zero degrees, but you know, we don't get it until at least 10 degrees here. It doesn't have to be super accurately pointed, just you know, in the general area, because it's a relatively wide angle antenna. So in addition to knowing where the satellite is so we can point the antenna, the software is actually also calculating the Doppler shift of the radio frequency because the satellite's moving so fast that it actually changes the pitch of the, the frequency. Lightsail 2, like most spacecraft, has a radio transmitter on it. That's how we get the data back. Lightsail 2 also has a beacon, a periodic beacon that it transmits every 45 seconds. That's Morse code. So with this setup, we have a directional antenna and we're tracking the satellite as it goes over the sky. And then every 45 seconds, we can hear using this uh, radio thing the laptop, the audio of that Morse code coming through. Very faint. Those happen pretty frequently. But it's showing up. Morse code is good because it's very narrow bandwidth, so it kind of pokes through the noise. Wider stuff, when you spread the spectrum out, it kind of can get drowned out by the, by the noise around it. Using the Morse code is a nice way of finding the satellite if you're having trouble. That was very handy when we first started transmitting to verify the satellite was alive. Even if we couldn't decode the digital data, we knew that was there, we knew the satellite was, was alive. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, cool. Nicely done, you guys. Very cool.